Hello guys, I'm about to make this video which will probably be silly, but let's see how far the tablets have come in the last 14 years. You've seen the commercials and you probably know this is an iPad Pro. But what is this? Well, this was my main computer during my master studies. It's an Acer Travelmate C100 from the year 2002. Inside is an Intel Pentium 3M 800 megahertz and it won Windows XP tablet PC edition. It wasn't this ugly back then, but I tried to paint it and it didn't last. The screws and the button are in some bag, no one knows where. So let's do some comparison and see how this Pentium 3 800 megahertz and 256 megabytes of RAM compares to the a9x 3 third generation chip with 64-bit desktop class architecture and 4 gigs of RAM. Unlike iPad, which is just a tablet, Acer tablet PC is actually full-sized laptop. It has a nice keyboard, touchpad, everything a laptop should have. So I will start by comparing which one is thicker. Well, it looks like... Oh, it's hard to tell. <laughs> it looks like the Acer is a bit thicker. And in this case, a bit is 2 centimeters. The iPad Pro is 7 millimeters thick and Acer is 29 millimeters. As if each year it lost 1.6 millimeters. How about the screen? Well, iPad has 12.2 inch screen and Acer has 10.4 inch with resolution of 1024 by 768, which is a quarter of the number of pixels of the iPad. But you still cannot see the individual pixels. It is a resolution of the second generation iPad. If you need a bigger screen, you can always connect an external monitor with a VGA cable. iPad has a touchscreen. Acer doesn't have a touchscreen, but look, stylus. That is what it makes it a tablet PC. It has a built-in Wacom digitizer that allows also pressure sensitivity. It had two styluses, one for drawing and the small one for writing. I only have this one left. It also has a bit of pressure sensitivity, not as much as the big one. iPad Pro has an Apple Pencil that is also pressure sensitive. So let's compare pen responsiveness across 14 years. Batteries out. The good thing about this one doesn't require batteries. While the pencil is charging, let me tell you about the software. This one obviously runs iOS apps. This one runs desktop applications. No 64-bit software for this old boy, but it runs all 32-bit software that you can run on Windows XP. That is millions of millions of programs. That means that there was much more useful software that this device could run than there is today on iPad Pro, and still is. Like, like Sketchbook Pro and full Photoshop, for example, the last time I checked, there was only Photoshop Express for iPad, and it is a crippled version of Photoshop that is missing most of the function that actually makes Photoshop the best photo retouching software. This one runs full Photoshop, CS1. Old version true, but let's be honest, Adobe hasn't done much for the Photoshop in the last 10 years. I think you can also find 32-bit version of Photoshop CS5 and it should be able to run on this Acer without problems. In case you don't know, the only limit of 32-bit applications is using up to 2 gigabytes per process. But this one has only 256 megabytes, so it's no biggie. I did some editing on uh, photos on this one. Uh, in 2005 from Hasselblad medium format, 25 megapixel images. 
It wasn't very comfortable process as swap was used a lot, but manageable. I also have Illustrator on it. And I even had 3D Studio Max running on this thing. It couldn't run in OpenGL mode, only software, but I believe the 2003 version of this laptop could. The Travelmate C110, I believe, that came out with a better, uh, better graphic card. Acer definitely wins on software side. So what else makes this a tablet PC? A handwriting recognition. You can open on-screen keyboard. It's either the regular keyboard or the handwriting input. Let me increase the text size and switch language to English. Hello. What else? Um, yeah, speech recognition. Windows comes with wireless recognition software. I probably forgot to connect the flat cable to build for built-in microphones, so I will use the external one. Just a second. So this is my external microphone. Uh, for the voice recognition to work, voice dictation, the only have, thing I have to do is take the language bar, which is usually in the taskbar, move it up, and there I have the microphone button. I click it. And start dictating. Dear diary. Dear diary. Today, I woke up and decided to make a YouTube video. Okay, the YouTube wasn't invented until three years after this laptop was released. So, voice recognition doesn't really understand YouTube. Not bad, but not very useful. Okay, the pencil is finally charged. And now I can do another test. In this one, I want to compare the performance of the pens. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to draw a few lines at the same time. And then we can compare the distances, distances between tip of the pens and end of each line. I'm going to freeze a few frames and then we can compare the distances. Next, the storage. Look, 30 gigabyte hard drive split into two partitions. The base model of iPad Pro still comes with 32 gigabyte storage. The one in iPad Pro is much faster, but still, in 14 years, and they added just two gigabyte of extra storage. Shame on you, Apple. Even back then, I could order the 80 gigabyte hard drive for, for the Acer. What happened to the Moore's law there? So, web browsing. Should I run Sun Spider? I don't think I have the whole night for this. But it runs Firefox. I think iOS didn't have Firefox until a few months ago. And look at this one. Firefox 2.0. I think the current version is 46 or 47. Um, no Chrome, of course. The Chrome was released 2008. That's six years after this laptop was made. In 2007, I bought the 17-inch HP Pavilion and I retired this guy and didn't update it since. I couldn't install Chrome. I don't need to. But remember the Flash websites? iPad never supported Flash, but this guy doesn't have a problem with it. There are still websites running Flash, games running Flash. 
it is kind of more useful than this one. So in what other ways does Acer from 2002 beat the 2016 iPad Pro? Well, this one has two full-sized USB ports. So I can connect a printer, scanner, 3D mouse, DSLR camera, external hard drive, external DVD drive. Uh, there is also a Firewire port. I can connect the external monitor. I can connect the Ethernet cable. I can even use modem, so we can use it as a fax. Uh, I can connect regular headphones, microphone, and yes, the battery is also replaceable in this thing. And yesterday I have found it is still being sold. I'm also dual booting Linux on it, so if you're not a Windows fan, you can always install any operating system that is x86 based. I cannot actually say that 14 year old tablet PC is better than new iPad Pro, but it truly has some advantages. You would expect that after that much time, everything would get improved and that we would have a universal device that beats this ancient tablet PC in every aspect. Apple Pencil is the feature that actually sells iPad Pro, even though it is less responsive than this 14-year-old technology that didn't even require battery. Instead of being able to run more software, it actually runs less and doesn't even have a true multitasking because background processes are automatically suspended on iOS. When I bought this tablet PC, I thought that the Starus responsiveness was horrible. If someone had told me that in 12 years the stylus would be as laggy that I would get only 2 extra gigabytes of storage for double the price and that I would lose 80% of features in Photoshop, not be able to run desktop software, lose multitasking, I would go become a farmer or something. Well, not really. But you couldn't have sold me on Apple ecosystem back then and you couldn't now. I actually don't see that much progress here. Thinner doesn't necessarily mean better. Less is not always more. And this is less but faster. Where do you think this goes in the next 14 years? So that's all for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.